everyone it is Kelsey this is essentially book thank you so much for stopping by my channel today and I'm gonna do my monthly haul my monthly reading wrap-up for January but first I'm gonna kind of reshape this video so I'm gonna now do this video as a combination of a book haul of the month and what I've read but I'm doing it kind of in a creative way so one of my goals is to read more books than I acquire every month. As I was thinking about this throughout the month and how I wanted this to look like, I want to read more, both more physical books than books that I acquire. And I'm including like the books that I acquire in this category as hard copy books, Kindle books, audiobooks. that's that category. But then I'm also still gonna keep a separate category for NetGalley because it is so easy to request books on NetGalley and I frequently just request too many books and I need to read the books that I have. So I'm hoping that by doing this and balancing out how many I've gotten versus how many I've read, I will guilt myself into <laughs> less collecting of books on NetGalley and I guess physically too. Um, so we will get started first with the books that I acquired in January of 2024. So my reading in January was very much offset by the fact that I got totally sucked into the Throne of Glass series. So I bought Tower of Dawn and Empire of Storms both are so that I could do a tandem read of this because I do have this entire series on my Kindle. So that's nice because of the tandem read. I just thought it would be better to have these physically and I'm happy that I did that. So I got those two and then I also grabbed Kingdom of Ash. Did not finish any of these three in January, but today is the second day of February and I have finished these two. So you will see them in my next wrap up probably. So we're at three books so far. And then I grabbed two books that are like parenting books. Um, so The Whole Brain Child and then Raising Kids with Big Baffling Emotions, which is in my husband's mates and he's reading that one. These are just books recommended for parents of adopted children and books that like we have been recommended in therapy. Yeah, I'm actually hoping to get to this one in February. My husband and I are kind of taking turns on the book, so I do actually need to make that a priority. This next chunk are books sent to me from the publisher. So Divine Might by Natalie Haynes. Uh, this is a look at think it's Greek mythology and women and just a relook at them she wrote stone blind she's written a thousand ships I believe too so this is just a really well-known author and I got to review this for the publisher I got the ascent by Adam Platinga and this is like a cop thriller kind of like he's visiting a jail and there's a politician there too and something happens within the jail and it's a thriller for like them to get out in time it sounded really interesting and it's got pretty good reviews. And then I got sent Jaded by Simon & Schuster and this is by Ella Lee and it is paired to Mame and Queenie, which I loved both of those. And so I was really excited to read this. It says Jade isn't even my real name. It began as my Starbucks name because all children of immigrants have a Starbucks name. So I'm kind of like actually really excited for this. It publishes on March 19th, so I will be getting to this shortly. And then a romance that I was sent is Kilt Trip by Alexandra Kylie, and this is publishing on March 5th. It's like a Scottish romance. And then this one I have now heard about from two people that I really respect. So it's Maude Horton's Glorious Revenge by Lizzie Puck. And this is about a girl whose sister either gets murdered or goes missing in the Arctic Circle maybe, or Antarctica, the Northwest Passage, so in the Arctic. And her sister decides to go up there and like jump on the ship that she was a part of and figure out what happened. Um, I've heard nothing but good things about this. So I'm pretty pumped that I was sent it. And then I got two books from my friend. One is this beautiful edition of Little Women. I collect pretty editions of this and then anything by Jane Austen, so fine. And then also The Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart. This is a series I would like to get to someday. And it is blurred by Sarah J Moss. I acquired 12 physical books in January, which spoiler alert, I read 12 books in January. So we will see. I know it doesn't even out exactly because some of those were not galley, but I'm not gonna balance out this month, that's for sure. All right, so now, excuse this weird lighting because my screen is right here. I got approved for a lot of books on NetGalley in January, which is fine. 
I'm really trying to not request anymore. I have, I think, 116 books that I need to give feedback to. That's pretty bad. So I got approved for Bear by Julia Phillips, Sunbringer by Hannah Kent, Hannah Kanner, Last Verse, The Evolution of Annabelle Craig, Given Our History, Real American, Skin and Bones by Renee Watson, which I'm really excited about, Sandwich by Katherine Newman, um, she wrote We All Want Impossible Things, A Wild and Heavenly Place by Robin Oliveira, and then Rednecks by Taylor Brown, which is, I really actually, it's giving me like Mercury Glass Castle vibes a little bit. So that one I'm really excited about. So 10 books I got approved for on NetGalley in January. I'm at 36% for a feedback ratio. I've been approved for 198 and I've sent 71. So I just, maybe this year's goal is to get to like 50% and then just keep whittling away at that. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyway, so I had to stop filming yesterday because my child got up from his nap early. And yeah, so we're doing the wrap up portion of this video right now. I'm actually funny enough heading to a bookstore right now. My favorite bookstore ever, Dog Eared Books Ames. It's about an hour away from me. And I don't think I'm gonna buy any books. We'll see. I think I'm gonna get a puzzle. I figure we do the wrap up portion of this video. I read 12 books in January. First, the ones I'm not gonna talk about because I did a whole vlog on them are the three rom-coms I did to get off my net galley shelf. So I read It Happened One Fight, The Last Word, and The Long Game. The Long Game was my favorite of the three and I gave that four stars. The rest were three star reads. But I did a whole video on that, so I don't really need to talk about it. I talked about how those three previous books were net galley ones that I got off my shelf. And I um, actually read five books from net galley in January, which is good considering I got 15, so I didn't balance out but five books off my net galley shelf. So I'll start with those. So it's the three rom-coms, but then I also read Mercury by Amy Jo Burns and she wrote Shiner. This was probably one of my favorite books of the month. I gave it four stars. This is about a roofing family in Mercury, Pennsylvania, which is where the author is actually from. It happens in 1990, 17 year old Marley West is blazing into a river valley town of Mercury, Pennsylvania. She has lived with a mom who's kind of nomadic, and this is kind of the first place she's been able to put down roofs, roots, not roofs. As she's driving into town, she notices some men standing on a roof. Her life slowly meshes with this family. The family, the Joseph brothers, their dad is kind of an alcoholic jerk. Their mom is just interesting. And the three brothers are kind of the glue that knits the family together. So there's the oldest brother who's supposed to be the all-American fixer, the best one in the family. He has all this potential. There's the middle son that's way more introverted, reserved, kind of that solid person that will keep the family roofing business together just in the fact that he's consistent. And then the youngest who doesn't even want to really be in the roofing family, Marley kind of gets looped into this family through romance and it is just this really lovely, quiet novel, family saga. I really, really enjoyed it. I loved Shiner, but I think I liked Mercury more because the family just kind of like, like sunk really into me. It was just a really, really good book that I will be thinking about. So that was the first one I got off my net galley shelf. And then I actually owned this one too. This is Uprooted by Grace Olmsted. I also adored this book. I gave this one four stars as well. This is Recovering the Legacy of the Places We've Left Behind. Grace is from Idaho, a very rural community. And this is part memoir, but also part nonfiction. So she is looking at why rural America is kind of failing and why people are leaving for cities and stuff and then how you get people to stay. And what I really liked about this is I live in a city, I live in my hometown, not really by choice, but by circumstance. And I wouldn't, personally, I wanna move out of my hometown, but right now it's just not what's in the cards. Um, and we're in a really good location, all our families here. This book really, really dives into like kind of why people stay and why people leave, but also the plight of rural America. I also come from a farming family. We have a century farm. I have family members who live on that farm. It's kind of special. Like there's just a lot that resonated about this with me. And then I have other family members on both sides of my, my mom and my dad that still farm or are like me grew up. I didn't grow up on a farm, but grew up in rural America and like have these ties to like 4-H, FFA. This book is just really beautiful. And I think 
it would resonate with a lot of people in Iowa and Missouri, Kansas, Nebraska, the Plains State. It, this was such a lovely book, like it's going on my forever shelves. I also was sent this by Fabled as part of their Storybound Society as a subscription way back when I did that, I think two years ago. And I'm so glad they sent this to me because I would have never picked it up for that. But all this to say, such a lovely book. It's not super long. And I just really liked even the look. I kind of am very interested in food law and politics and all that. And all of this stuff just kind of culminated in this book in like the perfect mix of things that I would love. So highly recommend Uprooted. There was just so much to glean from it. It's one that I'm probably going to give to my mom to read just because I think she would be very interested in that. So that is all of my net galley books. We will talk about the rest. I read with my friend Jean, Other Birds by Sarah Addison Allen. I know um, a few of you just like adored this book and I'm so glad I finally read it. I got it off my book of the month shelf. That's the only book of the month I read this month, but that's fine. I will make up for it in other months. It takes place in an apartment building with all these unique characters and you're trying to figure out how they all kind of come together. It's magical realism. It looks at grief. All of these characters in this building have had something like that they're fleeing from or traumatic past. And it's just, again, a look at like what makes you stay, what makes you go, grief, found family, it was beautiful. It was lovely, quirky. Sarah Addison Allen, I really love her writing style. I'm so glad I got to read this with my friend Jane. It was just a really lovely book. So four star read again, had a lot of fun with that. And then for book clubs this month, I DNF'd one of them. I read David Brooks, How to Know a Person for one of my book clubs. And this is a nonfiction book that I actually want to get physically. And as I'm saying this, maybe this is the book I buy today at the bookstore. I should get a puzzle. But this is just a really, really well-written nonfiction book about how to know people better. It's one that I want to own physically. I listened to it on audio on Spotify and I found myself being like, okay, it's great. It was great on audio, but I want to highlight this and annotate it and come back to it and just have it as a forever book because I think it's so valuable. David Brooks is also a Christian, which this is not a Christian book, but he uses some things of Christian beliefs and faith that I really enjoyed. It just was a really, really well-written nonfiction book. My other audio book I did this month was Tom Felton's Beyond the Wand. If you have an opportunity, if you were like part of the Harry Potter generation and want to immerse yourself kind of in the nostalgia again, this is lovely. I recommend it on audio because he narrates it and it's just really fun. There's an afterword in this book that he has added on that acknowledges how harmful JK Rowling is, which I truly appreciate. I think a lot of us probably struggle with this series that we grew up with and like have so many fond memories of and reconciling that with the truly terrible person JK Rowling has become and how she's doubled down on some of her hateful comments. I don't know. I think there's just a lot of us in this space that struggle with that a little bit and how something that was like so pivotal to my life makes me sometimes be like, do I even want to acknowledge that like I'm a Potter person? And of course I am. It was such a big part of my life. And Tom just does a really nice job of kind of reconciling that at the end. But he's also really transparent about growing up as a Potter kid, like his mental health struggles. And there's just some really fun nostalgia things. There's some things that I didn't know about in the movies that I'm not looking for. It was just a really, really fun memoir. So I do recommend that. It's not super long and he is so funny. I really loved it. I don't know. I just like, my, I think my brother recommended it to me and honestly it was a great recommendation. And then the next book, yeah. Okay, so I was graciously sent an Arc of the Fury from the publisher by Alex McAladies. This was from Celadon. And I am in the, you guys all know I'm not a huge thriller reader and I really struggle with them. Like it's hard for me to find the ones that I love. I loved The Silent Patient. This one was kind of middle of the road for me. Like I didn't love it, I didn't hate it, but it kind of was boring. Like I get what he was trying to do. I think it was well done. His writing is incredible. He is truly like a master of his craft. It just didn't really sit with me. None of the characters were relatable, which it's a thriller. They're not really supposed to be, but I didn't enjoy this in the way that I loved like The Last Word or some of Riley Sager's. It was just slow for me, I think. And at the end when it unravels, it was a really good unraveling. So if you like smart thrillers, recommend this. I just... For me it just was kind of fine like i'm not really thinking about it that much so there's that um pretty middle of the road <laughs> then in january i got deeply deeply committed to throne of glass the series so i started by reading the assassin's blade book three well people have feelings but i read the assassin's blade and for me it was the third book in the series i read it after crown of midnight <laughs> 
<laughs> so for me, it was book three in the series. I wish I had read it as book one. And I think I will die on this hill because there's so many characters and so many stories in The Assassin's Blade. It's a book of five novellas that it explains her backstory in a way that I think would have been more valuable for me personally in the story. And then now that I'm further down the road in the series, I just, I believe this more firmly. I think I should have read it all the way at the beginning just to know like some of her backstory and then some of these characters and it just would have fit better. So I'm going to die on the hill that The Assassin's Blade should be read first. Okay. Loved it. It was, there were a couple stories that were kind of slow, but now that I know what happens further down, um, definitely would still stand by that. But I did really, really like it. It was a solid like four stars for me. And then I read Air of Fire. I, I'm just trash for the series. Like, I don't even know. This is where we get to meet Rowan. And it was so fun. So then naturally I flew into Queen of Shadows, flew through that. And then I read Empire, most of Empire of Storms and most of Tower of Dawn in January, but I didn't finish them until February. So most of my month was consumed by Throne of Glass and I'm 110% okay with that because it's such a good series. I think like I've read everything then. I'm not done. I'm reading Kingdom of Ash right now, but I might say that this series is my favorite of Sarah J. Moss's. It's just really, really well thought out action pack. There's good romance. There's good characters. It's a really good look at trauma. Like she doesn't shy away from trauma and the grief that people might feel in that. And I don't know. I'm just like, I'm hooked. I love it. So those are all the books I read in January, 12 books. I had a great reading month, did not balance out in any way, shape or form as far as books acquired versus reading more than that. That's okay. It's fine. I probably never will, but that's kind of what I just want to be more mindful of so that I'm more cognizant of the books that I'm bringing into my house. Maybe February will be better because I'm getting really sucked into Sarah J. Moss again. Probably won't be, but um, until the next video, I'm so grateful for you and I hope you have the loveliest day. Bye.